Our God is a loving, tender-hearted, long-suffering, slow-to-anger God. God said, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked should turn from their way, evil ways and live. So turn ye, why will you die? That's always been God's message. That's his heart. And God says, I don't take any pleasure in doing this. I'm doing this in hopes that people will turn. I've sent pestilence. I've allowed all kinds of physical warnings. Now, I can't find anywhere in my Bible, I can't find a single instance of God judging a people or sending a storm upon a nation without first warning. And along with the warning, he's always made provision, a place of safety for anyone who would honor his word and believe his prophets and watchmen. So Moses was a prophet and he stood before Pharaoh and all of the government leaders of Egypt and all the people, the couriers carried this warning all through the land. It was a warning went out that God was going to send a grievous hailstorm such as the nation had never witnessed. This was a manifestation of God's grace, of mercy. He could have just said it because of their sin and idolatry and hardness of heart. But in spite of their hardness of heart and idolatry and rejection of his word, he said, I will make a provision for you. I will make it possible that you don't have to lose your cattle. You don't have to lose your servants. You don't have to lose your children, your family. They're safe. God said, gather your cattle, all your animals, all your servants, your children, and flee into your houses, get under a roof, in other words, take cover. And those who feared the Lord, Scripture says, made his servants and his cattle to flee into the houses. And he that regarded not the word of the Lord left his servants and his cattle out in the fields. And the hell smote all that was in the fields, both man and beast. Now, all they had to do was honor the word of God. All they had to believe was the word of the prophets and the watchmen, that this storm was coming. Praying Christians from all over this country saying, Brother Dave, the Lord's saying the same thing to us. Get ready for a storm. Get ready. And we're hearing the same thing. Praying people and prophets and watchmen from all over the world are saying, America is about to go into a storm just like our country from Indonesia, Asia, Japan, Russia, and all around the world because there's a shaking going in the world now, already underway. This nation is going to face a storm such as it's never seen. Now, I want to prove to you from the scriptures that once again, in our time, God has made provision for your safety and mine, for your children and everything that involves your life. There is a place of safety. Now, for the mockers and the scoffers and those who do not want to heed the word of God, there's no hope. They are going to suffer. Those who heard the sound and obeyed and honored the word of God, they fled to their houses and they were safe. Those who hardened their hearts were given over to what I call, what is known as a judicial blindness. It's a judgment upon those who hardened their hearts, who mocked the word of God. Isaiah the prophet spoke of a people just like that, just before God sent judgment. A people with pride, insolent self-confidence. A people who had no more fear of God, a people who jettisoned the belief in hell, that there was no accounting, that you don't have to stand before God. There's no judgment day, no hell, and no fear of God in the land. And Isaiah had a shocking message for these. He said, Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, you scornful, because you've said we have a covenant of death, and with hell we've made an agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through the land, it shall not come near to us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood we have made hiding places for ourselves. It's just like today. Everywhere you go, people say, I got a hiding place, I got all the money in the bank I need, I'll ride out any storm. Isaiah said, and the hail shall sweep away all your refuge of lies, and the water shall flow into your hiding places. And your covenant with death shall be cancelled. Your agreement with hell shall not stand up. And when the overflowing storm comes and passes through, then you shall be trodden down by it. And one of these days, folks, when the storm comes, he said, there's going to be such bad news. Morning, night, and noon. And finally it's going to dawn on you that it's going to be sheer terror just to realize what has happened and it's too late for you. The prophet Isaiah then, in the middle of all of this, 
Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, this is for Zion. This is for you. It's for me. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. If you're on the rock, you cannot be disturbed no matter what the news may be. Apostle Paul said, Our rock is Christ. Come, my people, enter into thy chambers and shut the doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little while until the indignation of the storm be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall discover her blood. The Lord said, I'm going to judge for the shedding of innocent blood. The time has come that all the innocent blood that's fallen into the ground has cried out, and God has heard the cry. He's heard the cry. The prophet Elijah, when he faced the dead son of a woman, he went in therefore and shut the door upon them both and prayed unto the Lord. This prophet knew what you and I need to learn, that the only way through a storm, the only thing through hopeless situations and trials, is to shut the door and get a hold of God, get to know his ways, get to trust him, and build up your faith in him through his word and through prayer. There is a place of safety, and that is your secret closet. That is a place of prayer. God's going to keep a praying people. You don't need to run to somebody. You run to your secret closet. That's your place of safety. Go to God and pray and seek His face.